Our favorite topic, regular expressions. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Regular expressions, my secret love. And I want to talk the next four minutes about things I'm excited about. So let's just start with the regular expressions. So here we have a regular expression. So basically what this regular expression says, match a string that starts with hello, bonjour, followed by dot s, followed by a capture group that says capture uh, more than one character until the end, right? So, so far as it goes. So when we now call the exit method on this regular expression, what happens? Nothing. We get null because actually there is a question mark, and what we want to have is an exclamation point, right? So when we do this, we get an array-like result with three things. So what we do, do we got here? We have the overall matching string. We've got the first capturing group, and we've got the second capturing group. So what if I'm now I'm not really interested in the first capturing group? What do we do? We can, do, we can use question mark colon, and this is a non-capturing group in JavaScript regular expression. Not many people are using that. And with this, you can omit the first result, which I think very, is very exciting, but not a lot of people are using this. So with question mark colon, you can omit caption groups in JavaScript regular expressions. So let's just go on and change the second group to, to this buddy. So what you see there is a named capture group. So what you can use is uh, question mark and angle brackets to name your capture groups. So what is the result now of this array-like result? We now have a groups property, which includes the name of the group that you just had. So with this, so you see there that we have rest is matching to the group name. So you can use uh, question mark and angle brackets and the name to actually group your capture groups. That's a, a really nice feature to have. So when we go now on, and we add backslash one. Does anyone know what that does? That is basically a back reference to uh, capture groups. So when we execute that, we get a null, because the word bonjour is not appearing twice in the matching string. So when we change this to bonjour, bonjour, basically it's matching again. So with backslash one, you can back reference capture groups, which I think is very nice for complex regular expressions. So you can use backslash one and if you give any given index with to uh, back reference capture groups. So you might ask yourself now, OK, Stefan, but how do I do this? For named capture groups, right? You can do the same thing with backslash k and angle brackets in the name of the capture group, which means when I now execute this regular expression, what happens? Well, we got a null result again because we're not having the same content twice. So when we change that to how are you and how are you, you will see that it's matching again. So for named capture groups, what you can do is you can use backslash k and angle brackets and the name of the capture group. And with this, you can back reference these, which I think is very exciting. So when we go on, let's make this um, a little bit easier to read again. So we can actually do this, and it's matching again. So when we have this name capture group in there, which has a period, right? Period is matching any, every character in a string. But the question is, is it really? So what happens when I bring a line break into the string? The thing is that the period in JavaScript regular expressions is not matching every character. It's not matching line breaks. So when you now change that and add a dot, an s flag, which is a dot all flag, the period finally matches every character. So with this, you got a matching regular expression, which is, I, which is very cool in my opinion. So you can use the dot all flag, so the s flag, to make this period behavior actually happen. So when we have now this regular expression and we go on, how would we check if an emoji is inside of this String. Matching Unicode emojis is not the easiest thing in the world, right? So what you can do is you can use backslash p with the word emoji. And with this, we got a non-matching result because there's no emoji in there, right? But what we can do now with this, and we can use this kind of sequence of characters in the regular expression to match emojis. And the same thing works for math symbols or for language symbols. So what you see there are Unicode property escapes. You can use them with a p slash and curlies. There are a lot of the, uh, these out there, and I think that's very nice. And other features that I like, but I haven't at the time, so let's look ahead and look behind assertions. If you don't know what these are, check these out. Uh, we now have string prototype match all, which I think is very exciting, and string replacement pendants in, with a dollar inside of this function. Um, so if you don't know these, check these out. And thank you very much.